The Petroleum Profit Tax Act does not exist anymore. We have a new act called the Petroleum Industry Act, which was signed into law in August 2021. Now, for example, poses this particular lecture would focus on Petroleum Profit Tax Act. I know that Petroleum Industry Act was examined in May 2022. For November 2022, I've not laid my hand on the exam question, so I don't know if it was examined. Now, it is important that you share this lecture with anyone that has previously failed taxation or advanced taxation, because this is our year of success. Petroleum Profit Tax accounts for at least 30% or 20% of your ICANN exam success, probably justified by the fact that Petroleum Profit is a major source of revenue for the Nigerian government. All that being said, let's jump right into the lecture structure. We're going to start with the petroleum activities, then we move to the basis of assessment for petroleum profit tax, then we move to the remittance or the payment of petroleum profit tax, then we move to the computation approaches in petroleum profit tax, then we move to the format of petroleum profit tax, then we move to variables of petroleum profit tax, and we move to solving ICANN exam questions on petroleum profit tax, then we move to petroleum industry acts, okay? Now, the importance of this lecture structure is to aid progression, understanding, and memorization, okay? So let's start from petroleum activities. Generally, the petroleum activities are divided into three. We have the upstream activities, we have the midstream activities, and we have the downstream activities. Under the upstream activities, we have extracting, we have refining. Under the midstream activities, we have storage, we have transportation of crude oil right because the fact that you can extract does not mean you can store on the downstream we have sales you're selling chargeable oil and all of that so the upstream activities is what petroleum profit tax act actually focuses on so it is taxed under ppta when i say ppta i mean petroleum profit tax act at what 85 percent the midstream and the downstream are taxed under company income tax act at 30% or less, as the case may be. So it means that the Petroleum Profit Tax Act focuses on only the upstream activities. Does it make sense? So when you have a question where they are giving you income that is coming from midstream or downstream, you will exclude it from being taxed under PPT at 85%. You will tax it at 30%. So let us move to the basis of assessment, the basis of assessment in Petroleum Profit Tax, okay? In petroleum profit tax, you assess based on the actual year basis, actual year basis. Now, how do you know your actual year basis? Of course, you know that already. January 1st to December 31st, any calendar year, any accounting year. It could also be date of commencement to December 31st of the particular year. It could also be what? January 1st to date of cessation. Okay, date of commencement, date of cessation. So I'm trying to tell you that your actual year basis can take three forms. It could be January 1st to January 31st for a normal company going concern, right? Or it could be date of commencement of a new company to 31st of December. So the company could commence maybe May 1st, okay? So the date of commencement to 31st December or January 1st to the date of cessation for a company that is winding up. Now to the third part of the lecture structure, we'll talk about the payment or the remittance of... Um, Petroleum profit tax, right? Um, so petroleum profit tax is usually paid instrumentally, instrumentally beginning from March 31st, March 31st of that particular year. So for example, the accounting year we are focusing on is say 2014, okay? So you start paying your petroleum profit tax from March 31st, 2014. So that's the first installment, first installment. Does it make sense? Then April ending, that's April 30th of that same year. You pay your second installment. Then May, up until February of the next accounting year. That will be your 12th installment. I think it is paid instrumentally so that all these petroleum companies will not run away with the taxes that they are supposed to pay to the government. Um, so the fourth part, what we are going to talk about next, is the computation approach of PPT. Very important, the computation approach. Now we have... um one very popular approach which is the income approach the income approach and you can also have the net profit approach if you want these notes just click the link net profit approach 
Now, this is very common in most exams. We'll solve questions that um, talk about these two approaches. This income approach, you'll be asked to calculate all the income, like sale of natural gas, sale of crude oil. You'll go into all of that, okay? The importance of this structure is that it helps you to understand. So if you start solving questions without us talking about these terms, you might not understand when we start to solve the questions. So the net profit approach, they would have already calculated the income, deducted the expenses. They just give you a net profit, then you start to adjust. So this one is based on adjustment, okay? It doesn't start from the scratch. While this one starts from the scratch, what am I writing? So here you calculate your income from the scratch, you deduct your expenses, but here you have to start adding back disallowed expenses, which we are going to talk about in the variables. Before that, let's go to format, okay? Format for PPT. I'm going to give you the format of the two approaches. I think that's subtopic five, okay? Format of petroleum profit tax. So let's start from the income approach, which is the most common one, where you have to calculate um, all the income sources by yourself. So for this income approach, we start from the income. Now, the income consists of crude oil exported. I'll explain all of this, okay? But let me give you the format first. And if you want the notes, you can click the link in the comments or in the description box. You can read my notes. It's a perfect summary and very exam-focused. That was what I actually used to pass my own exam to at 75%, okay? So um, I said you can have crude oil exports. You can have crude oil domestic sales. You can have natural gas sales. You can have other income or miscellaneous. Okay, so you have all of that. Just put your currency here. I'm just trying to give you a format before I explain. Because under the crude oil export, there's a lot of things you need to understand. Under domestic posted price, all those things. So you just put your um, variables there. It's a format. Um, you get your total income. This is the income approach. Then the next thing is to deduct your expenses. So you have admin expenses. You would have production expenses. You have transportation expenses. Now, this transportation expenses, that's to relate to upstream. I will explain all of that in the variables. That's number six in our lecture structure, right? Um, but when they tell you that it is transportation expenses in the midstream, there's a way they would describe the transportation expenses that you would know whether it is midstream or upstream, okay? Where we solve ICANN questions. We're actually solving three ICANN exam questions. Another expense you can have is storage costs, rent, Right, you can have royalties, um, and you can have other allowable expenses. So the very important thing is that you should know your disallowable expenses. I'm going to give you a list of that. Okay, after you deduct all your expenses, you know you put all your variables here. Let's just do that. X x x x x x x. Okay, it is very important for me to tell you that education tax. Okay, tertiary education tax. That's tax at two percent. This is PPTO. Is actually an allowable expense. It's treated as an expense before arriving at your adjusted profit. Right, so this is your adjusted profit. Now, when we are solving questions, we're most likely going to treat this 2% after adjusted profit. We treat it as 2 over 1 over 2% of this adjusted profit before deducting debts. I'll show you that. Now, after you get your adjusted profit, the next thing that you would do is to deduct your loss. Okay. You relieve your loss. After you relieve your loss, you have accessible profit. Then after your accessible profit, you will now deduct your capital allowance. Now, after you deduct your capital allowance, you have your chargeable <laughs> profit. So it's not this simple, okay? It's not this simple. I will explain why I said it's not this simple. So this is your chargeable profit. Then you can charge your tax, that's your PPTO at 85 percent okay and then you have your tax right now this capital allowance loss relief even um education tax there are things that we need to explain under that okay like your capital allowance in petroleum profit tax is a subtopic on its own because you have your petroleum um investment allowance you have your annual allowance you can have capital allowance brought forward so all of that and for pia you can have if it is onshore or offshore, for onshore is 5%. For offshore, if it's less than 100 meters, more than 100 meters and all of that, you have um, different percentages, okay, that you're going to allow for that um, capital or qualifying capital expenditure on that PPT. So that is why we are going to move to the variables. That's our next, um, that's number six, right? Variables under PPT. Now, there are six 
is it six? No, five. I divided them into five. There are five variables on that PPT. You have your income. How will you jump to capital allowance when you have not even solved income? We have income. We have expenses. That's where we are going to talk about all those allowable and disallowable expenses. You have your education tax. That's your debt. You have your loss relief. We'll talk about that. And you have your capital allowance. You can see that these are the things that make up the format. So I just gave you the format. Then we'll start to explain the format. Okay, I did not... Um, I did not give you the second format, okay? So, the second format, which is the net profit approach. Now, you just start from the net profit, okay? They'll give you a net profit. That is, they've already net off income and expenses, and they've arrived at that adjusted profit, sort of. You now start adjusting, because there's some things that they've done. They've deducted depreciation, you will add it back. They've deducted um, general provision, you will add it back. They've deducted more than two wells um, rent, you will add it back. So, all those salarial expenses are supposed to add back when they give you this net profit approach. I'll give it to you when we are talking about expenses, okay? So just in case you go and start watching question class and you don't watch the introduction class, I'm not there. Always. So when you have the net profit approach, you do your adjustments. By the time you do your adjustments, eh, hey, you now get to your adjusted profit. You now continue from loss relief. You get accessible profit, okay? Just know this step. You will do everything to get adjusted profit. From adjusted profit, you move to accessible profit. From accessible profit, you move to chargeable profit, AAC. Can you see that? To get to adjusted profits, you need to have done debt. To get to accessible profits, you need to have treated loss relief. To get to chargeable profits, you need to have done capital allowance. And once you get to chargeable profits, it's just to charge tax. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Now we can go to the interesting part, which is the variables under PPT. So I've given you the five major variables. Now we start from income. Okay, income. What is the income under petroleum profit tax? Upstream sector. You have sales of crude oil exports b sales of crude oil local c sales of natural gas very interesting this is the simplest topic in taxation d other sales other income miscellaneous income whatever it is called incidental income you understand so just know this now export sales of crude oil means that what you are selling crude oil to a foreign country so exchange rate will be involved does it make sense so for sales of crude oil they will always give you the number of barrels you sold multiplied by the price per barrel number of barrel this is the formula now to calculate it multiplied by export price per barrel Maybe 50,000 barrel times 5 naira per barrel. Very simple, right? Uh -huh. Now, that export price, how would you get it? So, let's talk about your export price. Okay? Now, that export price can either be the actual price or the posted price. Does it make sense? You're not going to choose between the actual price and the posted price and you will pick the higher so it's not as easy as just a number of barrel times the export price that export price they can either give you the actual price and the posted price you pick the higher now most of the time they will confuse you in this posted price you have to calculate it so what is the posted price so let's do posted price on this side so posted price is the price free on board okay this is the price free on board what does it mean? It is an agreed price. They agree, companies agree that from this um, government that are in charge of selling of crude oil, this is the price we agree to purchase um, crude oil from them. Now, the API, which is the American Petroleum Institute, American Petroleum Institute, is called what? The API. It helps to measure the density of this crude oil, and that is the Institutes that determines the posted price. Do you understand? So me, I'll now show you how to calculate that posted price. So to calculate your posted price, you need to get the difference between the standard API and the actual API. So this API is in degrees. It comes in degrees. It can be 30 degrees. It can be 55 degrees. Anything. It comes in degrees. Okay. So step one, you get the difference between the standard API and actual API. Now, when you get the difference, step two is to multiply by the adjustment. Multiply 
by the adjustment they'll give you an adjustment okay that maybe for every rise or fall in api you adjust by say um three dollar or 0 0.3 cents or they'll give it to you and we'll solve it in a question okay then in step three you would now adjust adjust by adding or deducting okay so step one says find the difference between the standard api and the actual api let's say the standard api normally is say um 30 degrees okay and then the actual api of that crude oil that was sold was let's say 35 degrees so it means that there was a there was an increase now to this 30 degrees there will be an attached posted price which they believe it should be the normal price so let's say attached to this 30 degree is let's say 50 dollar okay 50 dollar per barrel okay so you will now have to find the posted price the posted price we're actually looking for attached to the actual api that was sold step one find the difference so the difference is five degrees here now when you get five degrees step two says multiply by the adjustment they will now give you the question for every rise and fall in api can you see that there was a rise in api here because normally they are expecting um a crude oil with a density of 30 degrees at 50 dollar right but we have 35 degrees instead so it means the price can never be 50 degrees it will definitely be higher so it was a rise right so it's increased by five degrees you now multiply by the adjustment they can tell you that that adjustment is maybe 50 cents per degree rise so that's 0 0.5 dollar 50 cents is 0 0.5 dollar you now have to multiply that 50 cents that what step two said multiply right you now say five degree right times 50 cents that's 0 0.5 you now have 2.5 so you now adjust by adding or deducting. So you will now add that 2.5 to the price. So the price, the new price will now be what? $50 plus 2.5. It means that the price will now be what? 52.5. So the posted price is 52.5. Okay, this is the posted price. This is the posted price attached to a crude oil with a density of 35 degrees. Does it make sense? So if it was a decrease, maybe it's from 30 to 28, you would deduct. So that's how to get your posted price. So sale of crude oil is not just sale of crude oil. You have to multiply number of barrel times the export price. Now the export price, you check in the question, is it the actual price or the posted price? You compare. Once you calculate the posted price, you pick the higher. In the November 2018 question that we're about to solve now, you see it. Now for sale of local crude oil, they will give it to you now. Number of barrel multiplied by what? Local price or domestic price per barrel that's selling within ourselves now okay so it's this one that has all that drama now sale of natural gas sale of natural whenever you see sale of natural gas always think of a discount okay a discount always think of a discount that is it must reduce it must be less so let's say you are selling 100 percent by the time it reaches the final destination it might be like 82 percent does it make sense? So um, it is light. It is gas now. It gas will leak. So if you sell 50 kg, by the time you get to it might just be 48 kg. Now, this is where we now introduce the load factor and the G factor. If you have been to um, these classes, you might have heard of the G factor. Okay? And the load factor. I'm going to explain all of that. Before we solve questions, we have to understand all of this. Okay. So what is your G factor? The G factor is the gas production cost adjustment factor. Like I said earlier, when you want to sell natural gas, you have to be mindful of the discount and that discount is the adjustment. So you need to do your gas production cost adjustment factor. And there are four factors. Okay. You have to learn it because they might not give you the question. And in some questions they might give you, you have 16.9%. May I learn it too? I memorize this thing okay 15.5 percent you have 14.3 percent and then you have 13.6 percent i'll um, flip to the next page so i can explain clearly and attached to that g factor are the load the respective load factors brackets okay so we have 50 degree we have 60 degree we have 70 degree and we have 80 degree memorize this how will you memorize it by solving plenty questions by solving plenty of questions so let me go and explain this in the next page because here is already filled up now for the other sales and income this one will always be given they will always give you that other income maybe 50 million for the year there's nothing to compute so let us properly explain the sales of natural gas okay which is um c remember that a is sale of crude oil exports which we have talked about b is sale of crude oil local or domestic which we have talked about now sale of natural gas i said whenever you see natural gas 
always know that there must be a discount. There must be a reduction. That is it to tell you that your natural gas for the year is 50 million. Say no, it can't be 50 million. You must put something less in your account when you are competing in that format, okay? So to be able to know the discount, how many percent should I deduct from it? You need to know your G factor. And there are four basic G factors, okay? I said 16.9%, we have 15.5%, we have 14.3%, and we have 13.6%, okay? So if you have a load factor, okay, and a crude oil with a density of 50%, you will use this. If they give you your load uh, factor, that is your crude oil is 60%, you will just pick this. You will just pick this and say 15.5% multiply by 5 million. You do it. When you get it, you deduct from the 5 million. Does it make sense? If you have 70%, you use this. If you have 80%, you use this. Now, God forbid in the question that they will give you any of this. The examiner, something is always wrong with them that they will go and give you either 52% or um, 52 degrees or they will give you 64 degrees or they will give you something like 75 degrees. They always give you in between. That is where you now have to extrapolate, okay? So, but since this is the basic formula this is the basic this is the standard you now have to adjust does it make sense so for example in a question we're going to solve these things in proper exam question so you will see it demonstrated very well like in under exam conditions and that's why i'm teaching with biro and paper so if they give you 52 percent for example it means that between 16.9 and this is where your value falls right so what are you going to do you now say because it falls between 50 and 60 you must know where it falls in between you say 50 to 60 that is 50 minus 60 okay equals what what is attached to 50 16.9 to 15.5 percent does it make sense yes it does yes it does over what are you looking for 52 bar so you start from that 50 so that's 50 to 52 equal to what is attached to 50 16.9 percent so what is attached to 52 we don't know so you already have an equation and this is the unknown so you can solve from here 50 minus 60 you have 10 degrees over 50 minus 52 we have 8 is that it 50 minus 52 sorry 2 that's minus 2 degrees equals 16.9 minus 15.5 okay 16.9 minus 15.5 that will give us 1.4 1 1.4 percent over 16.9% minus x percent. So now you have a simplified equation. You cross multiply. Okay. This will multiply this and this will multiply this. So we have 10 into 16.9 minus x is equal to minus 2 times 1.4. So if we open brackets, you will have 169% um, minus 10x is equal to minus 2.8. So after that, you would collect like terms. So you have minus 10x equals to, you can remove the percentage so you don't confuse yourself, equals to minus 2.8 minus, because you're bringing this to this side and it's a plus that is here, invisible plus, 169. So you have um, minus 2.8 minus 169. That gives us minus 171.8. So 10x is equal to, Minus 171.8, that's minus 10x. So you divide both sides by 10, okay? You divide both sides by what is beside the variable, 10. So your x will be equal to what? 17.18%, or you can say 17.2% approximately. Does it make sense? So as you can see, eh? can you see that this is very wrong? Thank God I made mistake because 17.2% is going to be higher. And we are looking for something in between this, right? So we need something like in between 16.9 and 15.5. Why on earth am I getting 17.2%? Thank God is wrong. So let us look for where I made a mistake, okay? Um, so we said 50 minus 60 equals 16.9 minus this. This is correct. Then 50 minus 52, which is the unknown I'm looking for. Um, then we have 16.9 minus the unknown, Okay. You know, so 50 minus 60 should give us minus 10. You see, you did not tell me. It's not 10, it's minus 10. So this was where our mistake came from. But thank God I know that my value should actually fall in between 16.9 and 15.5. So when I'm getting something higher, it doesn't make sense. So. <laughs> imagine, imagine the lecturer herself making mistakes. 
I would have just taken another sheet of paper, but thank God I made that mistake. I mean, I'm just teaching like out of my head till I pick um past question. Um, so we have minus 10. So when we cross multiply, it should actually be minus 10 multiplied by this, okay? So it should be minus 169, okay? So when I bring it over, it should become plus. Does that make sense? So it should now be minus 2.8 plus 169, okay? Then I should have 166.2. See where we made mistake. This is why somebody will just fail. God forbid. 166.2. So it's 166.2 we are dividing by 10, okay? Divided by 10, and that will give us 16.62. It now makes sense. So it shouldn't be um this. It should be x is equal to 16.62%. Can you see that 16.62 falls in between? Thank God I made that mistake. So now that we have 16.62, what you now do is that you now say net sales of natural gas is equal to the value of natural gas they gave you, let's say 50 million, right? Minus... 16.62% multiplied by 50 million. Basically, you are reducing that 50 million by 16.62%. That is 100% minus 16.62. Okay? So, it means only 83.38 that will reach the final destination. That's what you would take as your income to be charged. So, we are done. We are done with all of this. We are done with income, right? Now, let's go to expenses. That's the second variable under variables under PPT expenses. Now, these expenses is divided into what allowable expenses and disallowable expenses. Okay, disallowable expenses. So, for your allowable expenses, nobody really cares. Any expenses can be allowed, but if you know your disallowable expenses, it's going to really, really, really help you. So, let us just start by listing 